Hello, hello, and welcome back to episode 5 of A Link to the Past. Now, I just want to be straight up forward, you guys. I've been watching episodes recently, and episode 4 I felt was not as fast-paced as I want it to be. Um, yes, we flew through the dungeon, ver dungeon very quickly, but I feel like when it comes to the overworld, I don't really want to waste too much time ending up at dead ends, so I just want to focus on really getting through the dungeons with you guys, and I don't necessarily have to rush to get something right away, but if I can get it, and I know I can, I will make stops. That being said, let's not waste any more time. We are diving straight into this. Where we left off outside this cave, I'm going to be going towards Death Mountain. And this is probably honestly one of my most favorite parts of the game. It's iconic. Uh, Death Mountain is in every Zelda game I can think of. Uh, but most importantly, it's one of my favorite dungeons. It's at the very top of this mountain. Uh, once you get past this dungeon, that's when things really pick up. You get those three pendants, you can get the Master Sword, and then... I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it from there, not spoil anything. But, uh... As I'm talking to you guys, we've run into this old man in the cave. He's more or less explained. He's trying to find his way out of here. Uh, I like this old guy. Once we get through the tunnels, he does actually end up helping me. Uh, I'm pretty sure he gives me an orb, uh, which we're going to see in just a couple seconds. Alright, we are outside Death Mountain. They don't call it Death Mountain for no reason. There are literally falling rocks that can crush me and this old man at any point. He's basically saying he waits for a hero. He knows that time's eventually going to come, and I think he knows that that hero is me. He just ran through the... the cave with me, but... Uh, so no, I was wrong. It wasn't an orb. It was a magic mirror. An orb is something we're gonna get later, but the magic mirror. Now this thing is awesome. Probably up there in a the, the top favorite. Not one of the favorites, but it's definitely better than the book we were previously talking about. This item allows you to essentially jump between the light world and a dark world. Uh, it is pretty essential when it comes to getting to certain areas. Uh, Popping back in to talk to the old man. He's just chilling in here. Whenever you do talk to him, he heals you, just like a fairy would. I wonder if maybe he has some sort of mystery powers we don't know about. Uh, but we are going to be going straight up Death Mountain. Again, I want to keep this video a little bit more fast-paced. I want to show you guys basically how it would beat the game. If I were to be sitting down and doing this all in one take, I could probably do it in about two days. I could use a whole weekend, Saturday and a Sunday, to beat this game. However, it's been fun. We've been splitting it up into some sections, and I want to I want to go some of the side places, but not yet. Not yet. I got a feeling that, just like in the last episode, trust my gut. Uh, if you guys didn't even notice, we are now in the dark world. Uh, those portals are everywhere. We've got this jerk kicking around this little uh, ball creature thing. Uh, but yeah, this is. Uh, the Dark Worlds. Essentially what happens is when you come here, you transform into a different form, not your original form. Episode 5, I still don't know how to bring down the start menu. We've got the magic mirror. Indication is, stand right here, there's a little sign on the ground. You don't get kicked by a little pink ball. Using this on the ground allows us to pop up here. And then obviously we're going to get that piece of heart. Uh, you would notice if you were down there that you can get up here, you just don't know how. But when you're in the dark world, this little mountain cliff right here doesn't exist. And let me just point out for a second, that this is actually Spectacle Rock, which is a very iconic location ever since the very first Zelda. Uh, this is all the way up to Breath of the Wilds. Uh, but yeah, I just thought it was great to point out. Let's continue. Uh, we are to come down this way. Uh, down that way is somewhere I'm going to go once we get the Master Sword, uh, no spoilers. And down that way is somewhere I dare not go until long after the Master Sword. Uh, we are just going to stick with the, the tower. Just like that, we are in dungeon number three, guys. Alright, I'm going to see, just like the second one, how fast can we do this. Uh, we are going to... I think we want to stick with the boomerang for this one, because we're going to have to go like that. A lot of back and forth. I think this is going to be the map. I don't really need it. Uh, I'm just getting it because if I don't, you'd probably be wondering, why wouldn't you open that treasure chest? Uh, but I do need a key. Where is the key? Think. Already off to a bad start. 
Oh yeah, so we're supposed to be going into, I, I believe, downstairs. Uh, but before I go there, I want to see if I can hit these switches so that the blue is up. Throughout the whole temple, you're going to see that essentially you want to be messing around with these switches in order to proceed. Look at that boomerang, just goes right over. That's why I would 100% recommend that. You could use arrows, but I don't believe that the arrows go over the elevated paths. Uh, this is not a fun room. I remember this. I just want to get through here as quickly as possible. Uh, and I don't even think I can. This is definitely going to be a room where you have to wait it out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and speculate that there's nothing underneath these pots, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're just gonna maneuver pro skills. Uh, uh, keep running the circles. That's all I can recommend. Uh, at some point, I know that there's like some rooms where you can just stand there and kind of swing your sword, but this is a really weird shaped room. It's not gonna work like that. Uh, sweet, you just wait it out. Uh, I just wanted to check underneath these pots. Nothing. All right, next room, and just like that. Uh, we are killing these annoying little snakes. Uh, you know, we are pretty far into this temple. Not really that far, but I haven't told you guys yet that this is honestly one of my least favorite bosses in this temple. Uh, not because of difficulty. Honestly, it's pretty fun fighting this boss, but more so because it's annoying. Uh, he runs around in circles. You guys are going to see. Uh, there's potential to be pushed off the map. And because of that, when you get pushed off, you basically reset the battle. So, you, you're forced to get good. Uh, and this is one of the ones that I struggled with the most as a kid. Uh, yes, this is going to be one of the rooms that requires me to learn how to open the menu properly. And pull out the lamp. Alright, we are going to light all these, and that's going to give us, I believe, a key? The big key. Not just a key. There's a reason we went downstairs. Honestly, in the beginning of the uh, dungeon, I don't even remember what upstairs is like. But uh, to save time, and we are back upstairs. Uh, of course, I did want to save us some time, but dang it, I'm stuck up here. All right, flash forward again, and now I believe we're good. We are back up. Oh. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm like, oh, I don't know what happens when you go upstairs. The whole thing's a tower. Of course I know what happens when you go upstairs. Maybe I just never really paid attention. I could also be mixing up Zelda games. I don't know. Uh, so the interesting thing about this uh, part of the temple is that as we go higher, we have the potential to fall da back down to levels we've already been. Uh, we don't want to do that. And like I said, that's probably the most annoying part about the boss. Yeah, I gotcha. Get you too. Yeah. All right. Um, so with these, obviously, you're gonna just continue to maneuver around. Pay attention to which uh, blocks you have up at the time. You can get around no matter which ones you do have up. But uh, I would recommend bringing the red down. And I'm gonna show you guys why once we get up here. Uh, I'm gonna kill some of these snake things. Uh, I'm gonna try to not have low hearts for very long because I know we all hate that noise. Uh, hearts. There we go. See? I got you guys. It's a compass. We don't really need it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure we have this left star down. Reason being, we cannot get across this gap. However, we can fall on the other side and we do not want the gap to be on the other side when we fall. Okay. Ah, we are back to the hearts. Hearts, stars, and horseshoes. Clovers and blue moons. Pots and pots and pots. Take the damn pots to the face. Yeah. Alright. We are chugging along with uh, still one heart. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and save us the burden. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use a fairy. This is the first time I've done this on this channel. Or for this series. Boom. Very used. Uh, I'm back to having one, but it's alright. I mean, we haven't died yet, so... I fail to believe that we're going to be dying anytime soon. 
As long as we maintain the hearts up there, that's what the fairies are for, right? We can die, but we don't want to. Alright, now hit this button, come back over here, and if you notice, this is right above where we want to fall. The reason being is because now we are on the other side. We got that orb that I was talking about. The Moon Pearl. I should know this by now. Uh, yeah, this protects the hero from changing effects of the Golden Power. So, in the Dark World, like I said earlier, when we transform, we turn into a rabbit, which turns us basically obsolete. Can't do anything, we don't have any items, nothing. Uh, but now that we have the orb, which is a passive item, we're going to be little old Link in the Dark World, which means we can really start rocking out there. Uh, we're not going to go there until after this temple, but uh, once again, spoiler alert. All right, we are back in this room, and I want to show you guys why we put those red tiles down. Each one of these is a heart. And the reason that it's important is because right above here is the boss, and this is the room that you continue to fall into if you don't kill him on the first try. We are going to see if I can do this on the first try. I'm even so gutsy to say I want to try using the ice rod. Doesn't work. All right, now we know. Uh, I would definitely recommend just spinning like this, waiting until you can get to the back of his tail. And just do it until he's running super fast, and then you know you only have one more hit to go. Uh, the problem is, he can bounce you around really quickly. If I let him hit me, I'm just going to go flying. So being too close to the edge means uh, we got to fight him all over again. And I would love to not have to do that. Aya, Jackie! Uh, we got him! We got him! Yes! First try! Oh, that's exciting. Uh, so you guys don't even have to suffer through seeing me fall. Uh, if you want to give it a go yourself, I would recommend just sticking to the center like I just did. Try doing the spin attack, gives you a little bit more control to just continue to move around while you have your sword out. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and point out the elephant in the room, being that the Pendant of Wisdom is red. Uh, we called it out in the last episode. Why is it red? Wisdom has always been blue. Wisdom represents Zelda. She wears the blue. Link is the green, which is courage, and Ganon's the red, which is power. Again, the Pendant of Wisdom is red, so you know what? We hadn't even established colors by this point, I guess. Now, we are going to the Lost Woods, which I'm very excited for because I haven't shown you guys the Lost Woods yet. Uh, I am going to go ahead and beeline there now. Um, for the sake of saving time, I'm going to run down the mountain, uh, get back to where the Lost Woods entrance is at, and then, uh, yeah, meet you guys then. And we're back. I think that, to be fair, before jumping over to the Lost Woods, uh, I want to show you guys how to get out of the Death Mountain, because this little path is essentially the only way that you can. Uh, after you've beaten the temple, you do have to proceed to continue this way. Uh, I've been doing my best to try to show as much of the actual progression of the game and not jump around too much. Uh, I hate this room. That's why I hate this room. I was going to try not to do it, but you know how many times in a row I will do this before I just not want to like walk down the whole way? Uh, and just like the last episode, my dog is now asking me to go to the bathroom. But it's a good stopping point because we are now right where I wanted to be. Quick break, and just like that, we are back. Uh, as something that's just like a quick scary note, the laptop that I've been running on the last week and a half has crashed like twice since I've had it, and uh, it hasn't been at any crucial point, so knock on wood, but gosh darn it, if that crashes during any of these videos, I will be devastated. Uh, we are here in the Lost Woods. The music's fantastic. I love it. It's eerie, it's also upbeat. There's like hope, but it's mysterious. It houses the Master Sword. Uh, I don't even know if this hole was here by the time we got into this area, but if not, cut the hole here, fall into the hole. And we got a heart piece, which is what? Well, another piece of heart. Guys, I keep forgetting to highlight after each episode or after each temple, but we are at nine hearts now because of that heart piece. That is great. Had I come in here the normal way, uh, that guy would have just told me the same thing, said don't bother coming in here, and I wouldn't have been able to reach that heart. So yeah, again, make sure you cut through it and get down there. Uh, cutting along, we are going to go grab uh, this little mushroom over here. And uh, 
I'm not sure if really right now I want to go run over to the witch and pick up the powder. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I should, just for the sake of getting it. Yeah, I've decided we're going to go pick up the uh, magic powder real quick with the mushroom that we just picked up. Uh, we are getting actually very close to the Master Sword. Uh, I could have actually just went and grabbed it right then and there, but again, I kind of want to make sure that I'm picking up the items along the way. And that mushroom, I'm not sure if it 100% sits in your inventory or if it just disappears and respawns back in that location. But I know you can go back and continue to pick up that same mushroom. Uh, ideally, what you want to do is run all the way down to the bottom. We're going to be going over to the Witch's Hut, which I had briefly mentioned in one of the previous episodes. We hadn't gone to it yet, so I'm going to show you guys. We're going to run down here, kill this guy. Run down here. Run past both those guys. Oh, they got us. You know what? We're just going to keep running up here and hug to the right. And I think this little area, we are now at the Witch's Hut. The Witch is pretty cool. She sells potions. Uh, she has a knack for smelling mushrooms. Uh, she knows that I have the mushroom from Lost Woods, and she wants that mushroom. Uh, her assistant actually helps make something fabulous. Uh, let me see. I think what we have to do is give the mushroom. That would make sense. Pull the mushroom out. Hand it to her by using the action item. She recognizes that you've given her the mushroom, and uh, she's going to go ahead and make me that potion. She says, come back in a little bit. I think all you have to do is leave the uh, tile and come back. Uh, and we are right, just like that. Her assistant has given us the magic powder. So this is kind of cool. It uses some magic, which... I mean, some items that use magic, whatever. Obviously, the items that don't use magic are a little bit more beneficial, but uh, this one, go ahead and use it on enemies, and it makes them look goofy. Uh, I still get zapped when I hit them, that's weird. Um, to be honest, I don't think the magic powder does much for enemies. Uh, if you happen to know anything about the magic powder that I not even aware of, by all means, let me know. I know later on the magic powder is going to be beneficial for us. I want to hit this tree. Apples. Alright you guys, I'm going to do another flash forward real quick. Uh, I know we're getting pretty long with this episode already, but uh, for the sake of showing you guys something that I had alluded to earlier and completely forgot about, we are going to go back to that ice cavern and we are going to get one of my favorite items in the game. Uh, and with that, uh, I'm just going to jump there. <laughs> Alright, anyways, we are back here at the uh, ice cavern cave thing. You guys remember, we've been here before. Well, we didn't come here for fairies, despite the fact that there are fairies and I have an empty bottle. We came here for something far more important. We came here for a magic bee. That's right, a magic bee. Now, we haven't even encountered a bee in this game. If you run into certain trees, you'll just get a random bee every now and then. When you catch the bee, you can let it out and it'll attack enemies. But the magic bee? This son of a bitch is fast and he does double the damage of a normal bee. And we're going to bring him to the very end of this game. That being said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here, guys. Uh, I know I'm leaving us on a cliffhanger because we've just pulled all three pendants. Uh, and now we're going to go pull the Master Sword. We're going to leave that for the next episode because that is a big turning point in the game. Uh, that's when, again, things really start ramping up. Because you have this badass weapon, the enemies get a lot harder. Uh, but we're going to be running around and doing a lot from here on out. Uh, I'm very excited. Again, thank you so much for watching this far in the video. Please leave me a like. I love that the channel is growing. By the time I'm filming this, uh, we are just under 50 subscribers. I cannot wait to see how far we get by the end of all of this. Thank you again. For everybody for watching. If there's anything in particular you like seeing, let me know. If there's something you want maybe cut out, tell me. I'm all for opinions and feedback and criticism and all of it. I'm here for you guys. I'm here to have fun. I hope you're having fun. And until next time, I'll see you guys in episode six.